Hello, part, this is part two of the video on Sandra Massey. And this is a um, continue of oh, information of my video. And this is, and I'm going to be showing some other video after this. So I, hope, I don't think it should be too long with this video, but this is this is going to be good. Let's break down his analogy on this video. And I'm going to make you all, I'm going to let you all know what that was. Here we go. That's how you're going for the driver. You see, she's saying, please God, please God, I'm trying to get help. She's got her cell phone, it's like she's texting or reading something, she's saying, please God, please God. All of that for me is a, is a trained eye tells me it's obvious that the woman is in distress. This is why law when you, people who go into law enforcement, particularly local police, this is why they need a college education, or at least take a basic junior college psychology class. Most of these police officers don't even spend, uh, flip that term, uh, it takes more hours and commitment to become a, a beauty uh, beautician. You know it takes you have to spend more hours to learn how to do people's hair as a beauty uh, beautician. It takes longer and their training and their certifications and all the things they need to know, it takes more hours, more days and months than it does to become a police officer where they're gonna give you a badge and a gun and a license that you can harm someone with. Does that make any type of sense, lady yeah, buddy? True. They're hiring people who sometimes don't even have a college education, or it's not even so much about the college education, that they should make these officers take basic psychology classes because you're dealing with the public, and therefore you're dealing with the minds of people in public, and you need to be aware that you're going to be dealing with people who have mental health problems, even people who call you for help. But his attitude, his disposition... Is an attitude of, why did you call me? What am I doing here? This is the white supremacist mindset. And you're gonna see why. Oh God, man. What do you need help with? Once again, it's obvious that this woman is in distress. She's saying she has, she has made the cadence of please God, please God multiple times. She's in distress. And then he asked her, what do you need? She says, I'm looking for help. Now, once they told her that they had already looked in her yard and around her house and there was no intruder, there was no need to come into her house. What they should have done is call a social worker. This is where social services comes into effect. A lot of people got caught up in the term defund the police. No. Really what it is, it's about use some of the police budget to hire psychological professionals. So when you come across people like this, that police are not equipped or trained to deal with, all the police officers, you can take a step back because at this point in time, she doesn't, uh, she's, not, uh, she's, not a police, she's not a danger to him. At this time, he should have took a step back and said, you know what, maybe we need to call social services and have someone from social services come and see this woman. Because we've done our job tonight by checking around her property. There's nobody here as an intruder. They're so focused on who the car is out front. Common sense should probably told them that maybe the damn car was her car, maybe a family car. And because this woman was out of it mentally, that maybe she didn't even realize the damn car belonged to her or a family member. Her own son, Malachi, said that he wished that he had been in the house that night. That the one night that he didn't show up that this happened. But he also said that his mother's mental state might have been such that he didn't know what he would have encountered too. When people are in these mental states, they're in crisis. You gotta de-escalate them and you go and get help. The police didn't need to do what they did to her. Simply turn the pot off. He should have turned the pot off himself and told her to stay where she was and turn the pot off herself. And they even watched her walk over to her 
kitchen area where she did turn off the pot. What? What do you need help with? Nothing. I just want to see if I can help with. What do you want help with? Huh? What do you want help with? Uh, I heard somebody outside. Yeah, we checked your house. We checked your backyard. I walked all the way through all these backyards. We checked your front yard. We didn't see nobody. So nobody's out. Okay, so she says she needs help. She's in distress. And they tell her right then and there, we've already checked your backyard, we checked around your house, and we don't see anybody. So at this point, they should have said, ma'am, um, we're going to get, we're gonna let you have a, a good rest of your night. But ma'am, we're a little concerned about you, and we want to call someone from social services to come out and um, come and uh, check on you. That would have been the professional thing for these police to, to do, is maybe call social services and maybe stay outside get in their squad car car and maybe they could have uh, you know stayed in their, their squad car and to that social service person got there or something that they were so concerned about what whose car that was but they had to go into the house and they did not need to go in the house most police that are worth their salt and gold i have a brother that i'm going to play for you said that they didn't have to go in her house that was the first mistake that they made that night no no Check the whole area. It'll take you so long to answer the door. Oh, I'm sorry. See, at this point in time, it was not, it was no need. It was no need for the caveman at this point in time to say, what took you so long when your partner just told you that she said, hold on a minute. Meaning she may have had to put some decent clothes on. Your partner told you that. But then you were steady agit agitating this woman, escalating. You're, you're taught as a police officer, or at least you should be, to de-escalate, not escalate the situation. There was no need at that point to say to her, what took you so long when the woman is explaining to you what she was concerned about. Once you told her that there were no intruders, at that point, you should have gotten your squad car and left. And if you were concerned about her mental state, you should have referred her to a counselor, maybe called someone to get a counselor out there to deal with her mental distress. Because at that point in time, as an officer, you're not trained or to understand, you're not trained. And at that point, you can, there's nothing else for you to do. You're out of your scope of practice at this point in time. You're out of your scope. You have more important things in life to think about than your internet. At BreezeLine, we put that way forward with home internet so reliable, you don't have to think about it. With our work... You're out of your scope of practice at this point in time. Let's get back to it. I got you. Alright. So, you hear her say, I was trying to put on some clothes. I'm sorry. You're going to hear her say that quite a bit, everybody. She uses the word, I'm sorry. She said, I was trying to put on some clothes. I'm sorry. And I'm going to get to this other issue because the father said that the police department in this part of Springfield, Illinois, the county and the police there lied to the family. How many of y'all know this? Put sevens in the chat room if you know what I'm about to tell you that the family was lied to. They lied and told him that there was an intruder that went in the house allegedly and took her life. They lied to the family. They wanted to make the family think that she took her own life. Just the same way that they lied about, you're gonna see some familiar faces up here. The same way they lied about Sandra Bland. Remember Sandra Bland? They told us that she took her life in a prison jail cell. I never believed that to this very day. So they told the family, or at least they attempted, that, oh, we think that uh, she took her life. Then they attempted to say allegedly to the, to the son, oh, somebody uh, came in the house, an intruder, and took her out. The, sheriff, the, the sheriff's department in this community, they lied. And the sheriff's department in this community is ran by this man, Sheriff Jack Campbell, answers questions during a news conference in Springfield, Illinois on, June, on January 28, 
2020. This happened all the way back in 2020, y'all. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a picture. Let me correct that. This is a picture of him answering questions at a press conference unrelated to this issue, not 2020. But I'm just putting it up to let you see what the police chief, who her father says is despicable for letting a man like this, a white supremacist, be a part of this police department, a man who has a dirty record, a man who has DUIs, a man who's been kicked out and booted out of six police departments prior. And he has misconduct in the military, y'all. She sits up there and tells him, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I had to get dressed. This fool doesn't even have the common sense. Before I, is there anything else I can do for you? Oh, no, sir. Okay, okay, all right. Boom, right there. Right there. He asked her, is there anything else he can do for her? She said, no, sir. She said, there was nothing else that you could do for me at this point. So at that point, when he was told by her that there was nothing else that they could do for her, why didn't they get in their squad car and leave at that point in time when they've already did their job while looking at the outer perimeter, which she was complaining about? They could have gotten their squad car. They could have called the dispatcher and said, can we get someone from social count, you know, a social worker or someone out here because they have people who are social workers and psychologists that work 24 hours around the clock and they go and see people on ground when they're in crisis. I know this because I've seen it in, 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 in action. They could have called a psychological. How many of y'all agree with me? Put sevens in the chat room. They could have called a psychological counselor to come out and check on this woman. That would have had a better disposition towards her. Yep. He, he's saying that he was threatened by a hot pot of water. Guess what? You didn't need to go in the house. At that point, she told you that she didn't need anything else from you. The police had no right to enter her uh, her house. They didn't have a search warrant. She wasn't there. They weren't there seeing her for any criminal activity by her or anybody in the house. So there was no need for them to go in the house. The minute they went in the house, they already violated her rights. You doing all right mentally? Yes. Sure. Thank you, everybody. Share right. the video. Share the video. Okay. All right. That's not your black car, though. Yes, you. They're so damn focused on the black car. Why? She didn't call you about a car. So actually, ladies and gentlemen, damn it, I'm really mad right now. I'm pissed off. The, the black car that's parked in her garage area of her house or on her property, it's, it's at that point, it's none of your damn business. For all you know, that could be a car of a family member. That might be her car. But at this point in time, no crime has been committed. Even if that car was parked there by somebody who don't even live there. Man, everybody, we see this all the time. Somebody, if you got a house or you live in an apartment complex, you, you go outside, you say, damn, somebody's parked in my, 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 my garage, right? My parking lot. Somebody's parked in my spot. That happens all the time. At that point, there was no sense of them pressing the issue about the car when she wasn't pressing any issue about a car. She had already said, I don't need anything else. She even said again, thank you. She was very polite, trying to go back in the house. Everybody's pending her out to be a monster because she had a, a pot on the stove that she was boiling prior to them getting there. So it wasn't premeditated. They're so focused on who car it is, man. If y'all so concerned... Ooh, I am pissed off, everybody. I am pissed off, and you should be pissed off. If the This is how simple it is. If they are so concerned about that car and who belongs to that car, all they had to do was take down the license plate number and the registration number. They got them big-ass, um, you know, they got these damn police got them big-ass flashlights, right? All they had to do in their investigation was to take down the license plate number in the uh, registration number in the car if they could see it 
Am I right or wrong, everybody? Hit sevens in the chat room if you know I'm right and wrong and, and I'm right and I'm cooking with grease here. All they had to do was do that and they could have ran. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, but I'm about to have a breakdown right now. Oh, my God. This woman would be alive today. All the police had to do was take down the license plate number, run it through their system. They got a computer in their system, in their cars. They could have ran that damn license, that damn license plate, and the license plate would have told them who belongs to the car. And I'm willing to bet you any kind of money. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If they would have ran the license plate that night, these damn Keystone cops, they probably would have found out that the car either belonged to her, and that would have been the end of the damn story. Or they would have found out that the car belonged to somebody else that probably lives with her like a son or a brother or a cousin or something. Or they would have found out that the car belonged to somebody else. And then they could have tracked that person down and said, man, get your car off this woman's property. How? Everybody tell me if I'm wrong or right. How easy would that be? How, I mean, how hard would that be to have just ran the license plate through their police vehicle computer since it didn't appear that she was either realized that it was either her car or that she even cared that it was some, that it was a car parked in her garage because she seemed like she didn't care. It didn't matter to her. Or maybe she didn't know. It's late at night. Somebody probably parked their car there <laughs> and went to somebody else's house. Who knows? But they could have saved themselves all the trouble by just running it through. All your naysayers on YouTube, why don't you break that down? Why y'all try to defend this, this cop, this white supremacist cop. And I'm going to show you why he is a white supremacist. His tattoos give him away. And I know these white supremacist tattoos better than anybody on these YouTube streets because the difference between me and them, everybody, is that I actually deal with these monsters. I know his type. You know, someone just parked it in your driveway. They brought it to my driveway. And just left it? So, she says, they brought it to her dr driveway. Why didn't they just check the damn license plate? Yeah. Oh my God, man! You guys are Keystone cops. David, Mary, four, three, five, five, six. So, right there, you can see him reading the license plate. So, this is the question again. You can see that you can hear the officer reading the license plate. Why didn't they just run the license plate? Because they went into her house, y'all. Well, why was it necessary to go in her house if you got the license plate number and you're reading it down? You can find out who owns the damn vehicle. I, I just don't understand them. And look, 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 everybody. Check this out. While they're bothering this woman, it sounds like it, it sounds like those are either gunshots. Or maybe it's fireworks because this did happen on 7-6-2024. And it says up here in the corner side, right corner side, 1-18-02. We're talking about 1 o'clock in the morning, man. And they mad about why it took her so long to come to the door. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. You got what sounds to be either fireworks or gunshots going off. You would think they would be more concerned about where that noise is coming from when the woman already told you she's fine now. Y'all hear, hear them sounds? You hear it again? Do y'all hear all them sounds in the background? Why are they not concerned about those sounds? This is where it went 
wrong. They had no, there was no need to enter her house. No need to enter the house. And if y'all want to know what the house looks like in the daytime, here's a, a picture where you can see what it looks like in the daytime. There it is right there. There he is smiling. That's her son as a baby. They had to block that out. But that's what the house looks like. That's what it looks like on the outside. Look at that left hand side. You got the grass. You got the bushes over there to the left. Look like she's got some plants out there. There's the door. That's the house on the outside, y'all. That's what it looks like in the light. Out of the darkness. They didn't have to go inside. Someone's calling her, saying her name, Sonia. Now I wonder if she's calling a counselor or something. Um, but I want to, I want to, I want to take y'all. I, I want to uh, do something real quick, real quick that I that you all need to know. Just real quick, everybody. I'll be back with that real, real quick. Like something I want y'all to know. She told them that she, when he when she came to the door, I'm sure you all have seen this video several times. But I'm trying to break this down. Remember she said out of her own mouth, she said something about being on medication. Right? And to the naysayers that are saying, oh, this woman was on drugs or some kind of, you know. No, this was, but this is what it was. Right here. Check this out. Sonia Massey's autopsy report showed that she had gabapentin. I'm familiar with the gabapentin. She had gabapentin in her system. The active ingredients in gabapentin is cannabis. We all know that marijuana or cannabis is not a stimulus that gets you hyped up, like taking cocaine or something. We know that cannabis or marijuana mellows you out. But she was on gabapentin, so it's obvious that the woman has mental health, has some mental health issues. Check this out. Let's break down what gabapentin really is. Gavin Penton is used to treat, I don't know if anybody's going to break it down to you like this, ladies and gentlemen. Gavin Penton is used to treat epilepsy, epilepsy, which she may have had. It also is taken for nervous nerve pain. Maybe she had nerve pain, y'all, which can be caused by different conditions, including diabetes. Maybe she had diabetes, y'all. Mm -hmm. Tell the truth. Right? And shingles. Maybe she had shingles, y'all. Check this out. After an injury. So Gavin Pitton is taken when you've had some type of serious injury to your body. When it comes to epilepsy, it's thought that Gavin Pitton stops what? Seizures. Because when you have epilepsy, that means you can have a seizure. Right? Seizures by reducing the abnormal electrical activity in the brain, y'all. That's true. That's true. That's a medication that is a therapeutic medication if you've got issues going on with your nervous system, problems with uh, pain, problems with not being able to relax, or you've got diabetes, which brings about certain symptoms. That's why she was taking gabapentin. That's what was in her um, in her uh, autopsy report. She wasn't on cocaine. She didn't have alcohol, liquor in her system. Let's just get that very clear for the naysayers out there who think they know what they're talking about. And tried to say, oh, she must have been on some type of drug. No, she was not. But she told the officer that night that she was having, she was taking medication. Let's get back to this. So she's talking to someone that's saying the police are in her house. I wonder if this is a police officer that's calling her back or maybe a counselor or social worker or someone that works with her, a caseworker. Who knows? 
fingerprints. Why didn't you put the stuff on the car, do the CSI stuff, and try to see if you can get fingerprints that might show that someone might have broken into the car? And at that point, if someone did try to break in that car, there was nobody out there for them to arrest anyway. They should have said, ma'am, looks like you've got some dents on your car. Uh, once, she told, once she told them that the dents were made by her, or the damage was done some other time, or maybe there was that she didn't make the damage, they should have said, okay, looks like someone might have damaged your car. Man, at that point, they should have left because there was nothing else for them to do because there was nobody to arrest. Thank you, Blaze. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you, Blaze, for giving me that super chat, brother. Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate that. You see what I you see what I just caught there? Why is he asking her questions about when did she damage her car? Just listen to this one more time. Can you grab that Bible, please? Yeah. Hey, I just need your name so we can get out of here. The reason why he was asking her name because he probably wanted to know the name to match it up with the information that came back from the running the license plate of the car in her in her garage or in her uh, outside of her house and that's why he started asking her everybody all those questions about all those questions about uh, man that you recently did your car that you recently have damaged damaged your windshield because he ran they ran the license plate and he asked her for her ID or her name to see if it matched up with the car outside. This is where the analysis and the critical thinking comes in, everybody. But two, you're gonna but two, check this out. He never had the right to ask, he never had the right to ask her this information because they never had the right to come in her house when she was never a suspect. And at this point in time, she had already told the cops that she didn't need anything else from them. But they still, this fool still forced his still forced the agenda to continue probing her. But I'm just telling you why I believe, through deductive reasoning, that he asked her the question about what her name was. Again. What's up? Uh, I got some paperwork. Can you grab that Bible, please? Yeah. Hey, I just need your name. So we... Boom. She says, can you grab the Bible? He says, I just need your name. Because he wants to confirm if she's the person that owns that car out there, y'all. Yeah, you're... Was there, was there any damage previous to your car? Boom. Why would he ask that question if he if the woman told him that she didn't know how the car got there? It's obvious that he knows that it's her car, which is why he's confirming the name. You see what's going on here, y'all? So if it was her car and they knew it, he didn't have to even if, if, once she told him told him her name and he realized it was her car, they should have left. And just said, ma'am, you got some damage to your car that you might want to check out in the morning. Because there was nobody to arrest at that point. Uh, previous, yeah. Okay, what was it? Okay, she admitted period, previously that it was damaged. Damage. A dent, I believe. She says a dent. Well, what about windows? Uh, He's saying what about windows because he sees the damage in that vehicle outside of her house. Okay, it was something that happened earlier. Okay. She says she admits that it's something that happens earlier. Earlier, So it solves the mystery. What is that mystery? The car belongs to her, okay? Tell the truth. Therefore, mystery solved. Get the hell out of her house. Say, ma'am, so, so she knew that her car was damaged. Therefore, there was nothing else to say to her. It was all they had to say was, ma'am, have a good night, take care, and leave. Because it's obvious that the woman knows that she's damaged her car, and it's obvious that there's no damage based on someone breaking into the car that night. So they screwed up royally. Perfect. Uh, what is your last name? Yeah. Should not take much last name. You're not in trouble. I see you're Nasty. Uh, Nasty. He's asking for the last name because that's probably what came up on the computer of the car. That's probably what came up in their computer when they ran the license plate. This is what he's doing here. Looking to hire? Medical staff, tech support, kitchen help, freight managers, you name it. Sonia Massey. 
I'm gonna say her name one more time because I want y'all to understand exactly who I'm talking about when I say her name. Sonya Massey. She just called law enforcement to her residence because of a possible intruder. Of course, officers respond as we should do. Made contact with her, spoke with her for a little bit, and things turned sideways quickly. It escalated to Miss Massey being alive by Officer Grayson. Uh, Macy went to the kitchen after speaking with the officers and removed water from off the stove. I don't necessarily know if the water was really inside it because I heard her turn on the water at the time she grabbed the pot. Uh, but she also made some statements towards the officers. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And this is when the demon come out of the officer. Once she said that twice, he immediately said that to put that pot down, he was going to shoot her in the head. For my last 13 years of policing, I never knew water was an escalation of daily force. Do you understand me? The use of force continuum is always officers have to go up one. Do you understand me? But I want you to understand this particular case right here. Boil the hot water. Let's say it was real boil, like real hot boil water. It's not life threatening. Yes, it's going to cause some injuries. Nobody wants water thrown on them that's hot. But it's not worth your life either. Do you understand me? And to see that video and to see Miss Massey be alive because of some water it's just freaking mind blowing it's something always setting us back do you understand me because we got officers that's out here in the community we got officers that do their job every day literally protect and serve do you understand me every day we got wonderful people that wear these badges and then you get this person that happened to have a badge that set us back every time by doing dumb stuff, negligent stuff. It's ignorance, do you understand me? You're not just affecting you when you make the bad choice. You affect all not the families, you affect the law enforcement division itself throughout the world because of the way you responded. I'm making this video because to watch that video happen, it's sad, that should have never, Ms. Massey should still be here today not losing her life because of a pot of water. Do you understand me? And I'm just hoping that other officers see this. And it's never to criticize us as a person. Do you understand me? But I also want y'all to understand that your action reflects all of us. Do you understand me? You are a re representation of all of us throughout the world. Your actions determine the next move. And you gotta understand, once you build that trust with the community, the last thing you wanna do is have a setback. Have people don't wanna believe in the police. Kids don't wanna be the police anymore. I grew up with people wanting to be the police. But there's so much things that goes on with law enforcement sometimes, and, and it is real mind blowing because it shouldn't go down that way. And you know what irks my nerve the worst with this incident is? Is that not only after he allowed her, he lied and said that she charged at him with the hot water. We saw the video. She did not charge at him. He didn't. After the whole incident, when he was outside, he called out her name. He said she was a crazy bee. Okay. And you know what put the cherry on the top? He was not recording. His body camera was not recording. Anytime you're dealing with the public, your body camera need to be rolling. Listen, it protects you just as much as it protects that citizen. Do you understand me? Thank God the other officer had his camera on because no telling how the narrative could have been spun. We seen a slight spin on it of him being charged at. However, just picture the escalation it could have been if nobody had their cameras on. You can tell the other officers was a little bothered. If you look at the reflection hard enough on the door, you can see him holding his head. And then when 
me X, she can go ahead and get the first aid kit. Officer Grayson discouraged him from getting that because it was a headshot. Really? A headshot that should have never happened. <sighs> I get tired of talking about deep stuff like this when it's involving us, man. Because I'm big on the community. I love people. I love help pe helping people. People say, why do I love my job so much? Because I love helping people. Yes, it's a basic answer, but it's the truth. Do you understand? That's, that's, that's from my heart. It's a lot of us like that in this world. Do you understand me? A lot of us. And then to see stuff like this happen, man, it's sad. Justice for Ms. Massey. That's all I want. She, she deserved that at least. She, she deserved it. I hope that she get the justice that she deserves. Because she should have been here today. Officers out there, I want you to understand, your action reflects on all of us throughout the world. Your actions breaks that, that trust with the community, the citizens. Do you understand me? I'm out, y'all. I love y'all. Everyone that just support us in general, law enforcement. Hang in there with us, man. It's, it's, a lot of, it's, it's a lot of us out here that wear this badge and do a lot of good. A lot of good. But I make videos like this also to, yes, we will be holding them accountable. I want you to understand that we're not over, we're not overlooking the messed up officers that do messed up stuff. I'm gonna leave with this justice for Ms. Massey. So apparently, Sean Grayson's wife, Isabel Butterfield, works at the hospital that Sonia Macy visited for medical care prior to calling the police. It's also been found that her father is a retired chief of police. But did something happen at the hospital between Isabel Butterfield and Sonia Macy prior to Sonia Macy going home? Which prompted Isabel Butterfield to call her husband, Sean Grayson, which then may have prompted him to go to Sonia Macy's house and make a disturbance outside for her to have to call the police. And then you respond. And then you and your partner just so happen to respond to Sonya Macy's call to the police. You knock on her door with your chest puffed out and then you take her life unjustly. Is that what really happened? You see, what I have a hard time comprehending is that when you're a nurse, you have to go into work fearing every day. One, because you have lives in your hand. Two, because you know one wrong move, one decision too quick, one decision too slow, you can possibly hurt your patient and never practice again. But then a police officer who has taken an oath to protect and to serve can continuously get away with not doing just that. It baffles me that the officer that killed Sonia Macy had two DUI convictions, worked at six different departments in four years, and was still walking around with a gun and a badge. How? I couldn't even fully watch the video. My stomach was turning. I literally felt sick because I can only imagine how she felt in that moment. Who are we supposed to call when the people who are supposed to protect us are the people that we need protection from? And this is a prime example of what Paul was talking about when he wrote that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. We are battling things that we cannot even see. And I think I can speak for us all when I say we are tired, but I need all of us to remember how tired and frustrated we are when it's time to vote. Because the same people who are saying they're tired are the same people who are going to vote for a president who is willing to give police officers immunity no matter what they do. Immunity. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. One of the last sentences spoken by Miss Sonia Massey before she was executed in her own home by an officer that was called there because she thought somebody was trying to break in. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. To which he responded, I will shoot you in your effing face. And then did so. After she said, I'm sorry. Okay? After she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, his response was, I will shoot you in your effing face. And you might be wondering, Rashonda, 
Why did that upset his spirit so? Well, I'll tell you, it's real easy. If you believe in heaven, then you have to believe in hell. If you believe there's a God, then you got to believe in the devil. Demons roam around here all the time. Pure evil. You understand? If you don't believe in any of those things, just know, no rhyme, no reason, nothing behind their eyes, evil. I don't understand why you all don't understand that. Time and time again, we've seen people do heinous things. We've endured so much that it can't even be written about. Um, as they said in the origin, honey, we don't have a number. We can make up a number. But the things that we've been eating, we've been eating. There's not too much that they won't do to us. Pure evil. Do you understand? And I hate to chalk it up to mental health, honey. I don't even want to put it on mental health. But there's got to be something wrong with you to think that we are not human or we are different from you simply because of the color of our skin. You think we got extra muscles in our calves that help us run faster, jump higher. Our lungs are bigger. Our heart is larger. We are human just like you. Something's wrong with you. And you hate us because you're pure evil. That's the only reason. She should be here right now. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Were you born between 1959 and 1969? If so, you... What's going on, guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. You're a returning subscriber. As always, guys, welcome back, and I do appreciate the support. And you guys know, on this channel, we've been talking about the sign that, uh, sign the Massey shooting police shooting and when she was gunned down in her own home by a police officer and uh, we all know who he is and um, even though he's locked up a lot still has to be unfolded with this case of why he shot and all that stuff I did a couple of videos about why I think he shot and uh, you know I've been watching the comments and a lot of times you got to go back to videos and if you see something you know talk about it that's the reason why I'm making this video today. I appreciate all my subscribers and people in the comments section, you know, sending me clips in my email and stuff like, Steve, hold up, she didn't even have a pop. I initially thought that, but then, you know, I seen video where when she shot, you seen hot water splash, right? I think I figured it out, and I'll tell you in a second. But uh, the family got on TV, and they asked the son, a question saying, hey, uh, do you think she would have got shot if she was black? And I like this answer. And I got to agree with him. If this, if this woman, Sandra Massey, and I want you to hear me out, was not black, I think the situation would have ended a little bit different. Another thing is, I think uh, this officer lied. Remember they said it was a cover-up? I think this is what they were talking about with the cover-up. Now, that's why I say this other officer that's with him needs to be locked up because he didn't say nothing. And I'll show you the video footage of that as well. But let's go look at the family right now. And I got to give these people a hell of respect, man. These are some respectable people. They very classy on camera. You know what I mean? And they say what, they, what needs to be said. I like how they carry themselves. It's an unfortunate incident what happened to this woman. And uh, it tells a little bit about what she was dealing with in life before her life was taken by this police officer. Take a look, man. Who was Sonia Massey for people who don't know her? She was very smart. And she's always helping everybody but herself. She really was a homebody and a good mom. Malachi, what was your mom like? She was just a ball of love, honestly, to me. She cooked me the best food. I love her food. She was just a ball of energy. A ball of energy. She could talk to anybody, you know. She's just a, the, the most loving person ever. Does it feel like she's gone? No. This is feeling surreal to me right now. I'm, she had lupus and stuff like that. So I would never think she would pass from like anything like this. I would think it was from that. But she would always tell me that if she did pass, just be strong. That's all I could do for her. It's not real. This can't be real. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry for your loss too. And how did you find out that a deputy had shot your mother? I found out from my cousin telling me. What do you want to see done now? I want him to get for full term the highest amount of years he can get until death. Do you think Sonia would still be alive if she had not been black? Yeah, he would have definitely been more cautious. He wouldn't have did that, I don't think. No, he wouldn't have did it at all. We're going to get justice for sure. I know. We are for sure. I'm positive. I'm positive. Are we from Yeah. Oh, I was accused for the name of Jesus. I was for the name of Jesus. No, I swear to God. Drink your face. Okay, I'm sorry. Malachi, you told me you only watched a little bit of the video. You had to stop. Yeah, I can't. I can't finish it. Like, cause the, my mom, like, she was too nice. Like, it's no way. Nothing like that should happen. Donna, you watched it. No, I can't only one. I can't. You'd mentioned that Sonia was sick, so she had lupus. You said she was on the last stage of getting the disease. And mentally, was she? Okay, as far as you know? Yeah, she was up until the last few days before that. She started saying, I'm going to die. She started getting paranoid. Was Sonia ever diagnosed with anything? A few days before, they said that she was um, paranoid because something happened. I don't know what set her off. All right, guys, that's the uh, story of what the family said, and it was heartbreaking to me. She said she uh, had lupus, and she had she was just diagnosed last late last year with paranoid schizophrenia. Both of them are uh, vicious diseases to have, and um, it's unfortunate that this situation came to that. But I'm gonna tell you something. I think a lot of this, you know, comes from lack of sensitivity from certain officers that come across certain situations. And that's real. You know, I think it all came down to the right kite, the right cop at the wrong place. Another thing is this. If she wasn't directed to go over there and uh, get that water off the stove, I don't think this would have happened to her. Now let's get into this, what this family was talking about. They asked the uh, son, and you know, he had incredible reserve on it on TV. He said, you know, we'll get justice, but no matter what justice you get, and in my opinion, it will never bring back your mother and it'll never bring true justice for what happened to her. This woman was gunned down in a house, man. In a house. He said, they asked that dumbass question. Oh, you think if she was, wasn't black, it would have been different? He said, yeah, it would have. They would have been a little bit more sensitive. For a long, for a long time, and you know, black folk in America, and I'm trying to say this correctly, you know, especially at now, have been associated with being disobedient, hard-headed, snarky with comments, smart mouth, uh, and belligerent in presence of police. She said in the beginning, outside, she said, hey, I've been trying to get help. And they've been asking, what you been trying to get help from? And she, I guess she thought about it and she didn't want to tell him. And she said, well, somebody, she diverted, somebody was at the house. He said, well, we went and searched and all this other stuff, right? I still don't understand the reason for them going in the house. Because the guy that shot her, the cop that shot her was the one that went in the house with her. So I don't know if she invited them in and said, hey, you know, come in the house or whatever. I guess they asked for an ID, I guess, to make a statement or whatever, right, do paperwork. But either way, like I said, this woman should still be here. But I'm going to show you something real quick. Remember, I was talking about water had flu. This is what I think happened. And I think this is my final, because, I mean, you've seen water splash. When she... They told her, you know, put the pot down. When she said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. She had the pot holders in her hand, remember? 
somebody set me something in slow motion because I'm like, I'm sure she put the pot down. I seen that in the first video I did. I'm like, where did the water come from? There was a blue bucket on the ground. And remember, the cops kept saying, drop the bucket, drop the bucket. This is what I think honestly happened. When she said that I would be in the name of Jesus, and he said, I'll shoot you in your effing face and all this other stuff. When she put the pot, when she, she put the pot holders, when he pulled the gun on me, she went down like this. I think she grabbed that bucket, that blue bucket, and she was trying to show him. When she, she just went down near it and just touched it. When she touched it, I think she blasted. I think she was trying to say, hey, look, no, I was putting the water in here, but it was screaming so that he probably couldn't hear her. That's what I think happened. And when he hit her, she fell and that bucket splashed. That's what you've seen. Because, you know, I still do that sometimes. Take hot water, put it in a five-gallon bucket or something, and you've got tough stains on the floor. You know what I'm saying? A lot of us have done that. We take boiling water and put it in there to get them tough stains up. I think she was doing that. And when you seen that water splash, that's when she got hit and fell and the water just splashed. That's what I honestly believe. Because when somebody, I forgot, shout yourself out. The people that sent that to me multiple times in slow motion, you see the pot's still there. And I'm like, why is he saying, put, let the pot go? And then I was like, okay, well, did, did she have a pot? Didn't even know. She had a bucket on the ground. So where would the water be in that bucket? It was a mop bucket on the ground. A blue mop bucket, I think it was. But either way, this guy lied at the end because I didn't go to the end. When I seen her like gurgling, it, it bothered me. Go to the end. When the supervisor come, this is what you hear. And listen closely. Shots fired! Shots fired! Shots fired! Drop the f***ing pot! Oh my God, oh my God. I'm trying to get help, y'all. But what do you need help with? Nothing. I just... Please, God. Please, God. Please. I don't know what to do. You were born. Huh? What do you need help with? Nothing. I just want to see if you can help me. What do you want help with? Huh? What do you want help with? Huh? I heard somebody outside. Yeah, we checked your house. We checked your backyard. I walked all the way through all these backyards. We checked your front yard. Outside, you can hear the sirens coming. He says she's 1096. I guess that means she's dead or, 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 or dying, whatever. And uh, he goes outside, walks around for a little bit. Uh, I guess they radio him. He says, I'll explain when you get here. As the police are running up there, he tells all the other cops to stay outside. This is the guy that shot him. Then he says, just the Sarge. The Sarge comes in. It's like, what's going on? Oh. She came at me, like you seen the thing, with hot boiling water. And the part that messes me up is, so you shot her. Yeah, yeah. Like, 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 like what do you think? Yeah. Somebody left a comment, but he said, he shot this girl to show uh, no remorse, like he killed a snake or a rat or something. He shot a snake or a rat. No sensitivity at all. This is heartbreaking. This is somebody's mom. You know what I'm saying? Seem like good people. She seemed good. I didn't act anywhere out of the normal besides you could tell something was wrong with her, and that's the thing. They couldn't tell nothing was wrong with her. She was going through some type of mental distress. You could see it. You know what I'm saying? She was all over the place, like, you know, trying to find her IDs and stuff. It's like, I would have figured that out when I was there. But anyway, man. This guy lied. For what? For what? This makes no sense to me. It doesn't. 
nobody was there. She left the pot up there. Reaction time as far as her with the thing, she didn't come at you. For her to come at you and throw that water for it to hit you, she would have had to be standing up. She went down and got on her knees. She ain't gonna be to throw that water that far with you. If she did, your reaction time would have caught it. He laid into this woman because he felt as though she wasn't listening. Who gonna throw water on you when he scared it? You didn't see she was scared when you pulled that gun. She said, oh. All in all, man, you know what? We do, we do these videos, and sometimes as content creators, we don't get it right sometimes. We don't. But you know, for the sake of those that are lost, a lot of times, you know, you got to go back and correct yourself. I thought, you know, water was thrown because I seen it on the ground. It wasn't. I think it was that that water came out because the way it, it rolled on the floor was when her body landed and knocked it over. So I just wanted to clarify that. But, man, this thing right here is messed up all the way around the board. A woman in her own house get gunned down. And he's sitting up there like nothing... It's nothing. That's the part that's scary. Like I told you before, you never know how they react with you. You're only as good as the last reaction they had in a similar situation. If that went bad, and this one reminds me of that, a lot of times, gotta be careful. I'm stock market Steve. Well, do you have the facts right there? And I didn't get a chance to, but he, you go to information, man, he can probably show you more about the detail of the, the tattoos, about what it stands for. And even the FBI statistics say that somehow some of these groups have infiltrated law enforcement. So, and they don't take it seriously. It's the good old boys club. People don't understand. It's the good old boy. That's why they won't do it. You know, and they know that they, they're going to get backed up. Again, it comes back to that police union. And I think the cities are scared of it. And they know how to go and get their, their attorneys. And they kind of, they, in the courts and everything. Yeah, it's, it's very seldom you get a case. But I got to mention the other video. This happened here in Ohio. In the city where I'm at now, Columbus, last seven, eight years, been this happened to some police, police officers that did. It was, it was no justification to take, take a person out when they surrendered their hands like this. And they wondering why they having problems recruiting police across this country. What does that tell you when the people see that? And it's like, you know, just like that cop, that one cop said, yeah, you make them, yeah, they, they do make them look bad. It's like, it's because they both protect, but they act like Nazi soldiers. That's what basically what he, he was acting like. But, you know, this is, this is America. And if we don't change the gun laws and administration, they don't do it, it's going to keep happening. You know, if you're scared to do this type of work, why well, be a police officer? You gotta go deal with the public. I think it's something personally that some people want to be a police, so they can, they want to show some kind of power over some as a power trip, and they can use the badge to do it. That's how they, when it comes to citizens. But this is the, the second, yeah, this is the last segment, but it was really sad. Uh, be careful out there, and if you have a family problem, man, work it out with your black family or any family member. Don't call the police unless it's necessary. Because you never know what kind of police officer you're going to get. He's absolutely right. This, 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 this video, video showed it. Now a woman's gone forever from her family. And they, they don't, and it's, and it's sad that they don't value people just because of skin color and texture of their hair human. That they, some evil manifested in somebody to take out a life. Think about that. You, you, I'm, 
What kind of individual do that? An evil person. All right, then, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the you know, video. And uh, guys, be careful. You know, not just the criminal now. You got to worry about the one behind the badge. Which one is the good guy? Which one the bad guy? It is what it is, as usual. Take care. Be blessed.